You are watching Be Seen, Be Heard. I'm Rob Similcare in New York. The prison overcrowding problem in this country has reached epic proportions. There are nearly, there are currently over two million people incarcerated nationwide, and many state prisons are at capacity. In this country alone, a record seven million people, or one in 32 American adults, is currently in jail, on probation, or on parole. And the annual price tag for corrections in the U.S. is more than 60 billion. That's billion with a B dollars. Our guest today has some very specific ideas on how to reform the prison system, and we, he will be responding to your comments. Criminologist Jeffrey Ian Ross, he is the author of Special Problems in Corrections, a book set to be released this fall, and he joins us from Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So first of all, why is this a problem? Why would you say the prison system needs to be reformed? Uh, many reasons. Uh, number one is there's just too many people behind bars and uh, as you mentioned the statistics are you know phenomenal. Over the past 30 years we've incarcerated uh, individuals in the United States at a disproportionate rate um, and uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, changes in sentencing laws that have been passed over the last 20 years including uh, the massive war on drugs where we've seen people who are first-time offenders, nonviolent criminals, uh, be swept up by the criminal justice system and be incarcerated both in state and in federal prisons. Now, Jeff, one measure of, of whether the system's working or not, obviously, is prison population, which is huge, but is it fair to say that, uh, that maybe the ultimate measure is crime rates? Are crime rates going up or are they going down? Is, is, isn't that really the way to, to judge whether the system is working? And uh, clearly, they have gone down long term since the early 90s, although they've ticked back up recently. So why isn't a lower crime rate a sign that maybe the, the system is working in some way? Well, the, the crime rate we're talking about, uh, number one, is an imperfect indicator of the actual amount of crime. These are crimes that are reported to the police and uh, typically the kind of crimes that are reported to the police are the more serious crimes uh, like uh, homicide uh, or crimes where a individual will get some sort of a uh, insurance uh, reimbursement. So if you have a vehicle and uh, your vehicle is stolen uh, it, you will and your vehicle is um, the price or the value of your vehicle is beyond your deduct deductible or above your deductible, you're going to report that to the police because you need a police report to uh, turn, your, uh, turn it into the insurance company to get some sort of reimbursement. So Jeff, are you saying that crime rates are, are, are not necessarily as low as we believe they are based on the well, way that they're reported? They're an imperfect indicator, and the you know crime rates go up and they go down somewhere between one to five percent, depending upon which kind of category we're talking about. And uh, you know the 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 fact that we have a decreased crime rate really has a really small connection to whether or not what how we're treating folks who have been convicted of a crime and who have been sent to jail or in prison.